today on The List, the donkey that saved other animals, two sisters who found each other after a lifetime apart, and how you might be washing your hair the wrong way. We're cleansing the scalp, we're conditioning the ends. Plus, what you need to know before a divorce. There's a whole list of factors, regardless of the state you're in, that the court has to look at. But up first, the extra money that might be hiding in your closet. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rose. And I'm Christina Guerrero. You know, between inflation, a volatile stock market, and rising interest rates, man, a lot of people's finances took a hit last year. Hopefully those things are moderating just a bit. Fingers crossed this will be a better year. But getting started with your numbers down and your confidence shaken, be a challenge. So we have a few things you can do to hit your 2023 financial goals. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. This past year took a toll on many people's bank accounts. So let's put it behind us and pop into 2023 with a new plan. Improving finances is within the top five goals that people set for themselves moving into the new year, and that is year after year that we see that. Money-saving expert Bethany Hollers with BrickSeek.com has three ways you can save more money this year. First, clear the clutter from your home and start selling. Go through your closets and set aside clothes that you haven't worn in several seasons. Gather toys that the kids have outgrown. Some books or video games that are no longer used and then simply start selling them. Bethany says posting items online is as easy as snapping a photo and typing a few details. I would definitely recommend joining any of the local online yard sale groups on Facebook that are local to the area where you live. That is a great place to start. On Facebook, click groups, then search for garage sale or yard sale. Facebook Marketplace is a wonderful platform with a huge reach. You can sell items locally or worldwide if you're willing to ship. And if you're not on Facebook, there's apps that you can download, such as OfferUp, LetGo, Mercari, that also allow you to sell things local to you. And these items that bring in the biggest bucks are? Any kind of a nostalgic feeling for any age group, that sells very quickly. She says collectibles are king also. Electronics in almost any condition. Clothes if they're name brand and in good condition, and that goes also for toys. Her second tip to save money, ask for lower credit card rates and fees. About 84% of cardholders who called their credit card company to either ask for a lower interest rate, maybe a higher credit limit to waive a late fee or waive an annual credit card membership fee, were successful in doing so. That's from a survey by creditcards.com. I literally just did this last week. Bethany noticed a $99 annual membership fee on her credit card statement. I just simply ask, could you please waive this annual fee? A few minutes later, the rep got back online and the fee was waived. And finally, review your subscriptions. Over half of all Americans, they've taken the plunge and cut the cord. But now subscriptions to streaming services are stacking up. So many streaming services have emerged now in the past few years. Shows that used to be on large platforms like Netflix or Hulu have moved onto their own network streaming channels now. And now you've got to purchase a subscription to these smaller streaming channels to watch those same shows, or you have to get an add-on pack for one of the larger platforms. Bethany says her family mostly watches Disney. Disney Plus. I forgot I was even signed up on AutoPay for Netflix. And if you're not watching any of the shows there, go ahead and cancel those subscriptions if you're not using them. So sell your stuff, call your credit card company, and scan those subscriptions. Keeping your bank account bigger in 2023 is at the top of the list. After the stress of the holidays comes January, which has the dubious honor of being known as National Divorce Month. Inevitably, the end of a marriage affects a lot of people, so we have tips on navigating a divorce without breaking apart the rest of your life. January brings the start of the new year with new beginnings, new resolutions. Maybe people are thinking we're going to give it one more go during the holidays and it's going to make or break it. But also sometimes, sadly, some endings. Oftentimes it doesn't work. And so people say it's a new year in January. I'm going to start fresh and we're going to do the divorce and transition into something different. If you're going through that transition, then we're learning how to navigate through it with the help of Wendy Hernandez of Hernandez Family Law. The start 
you need to gain clarity. You have to think about if finances are an issue, what are my needs and what do I need to meet them? Can I get a job? So to gain clarity, what I recommend to people is really sit and think about it. Like, what do I want my life to look like? And when it comes to the kids, what should custody look like in the ideal situation? And by custody, I mean, what is the decision making arrangement going to be? How are they going to make decisions with the other parents? And also, what will parenting time look like? How much time will the children be spending with each parent? If you're splitting the home or other items, make sure to consult with a lawyer so you know what's happening. They really do need to understand, okay, is this a community property state or not? What do judges typically in this state do as far as custody or parenting time? Because if you don't have a basic understanding of the law, then it's possible you're going to ask for things that are not reasonable, and that's not going to be good for you at all. Next up, remember that every case is unique. One of the big challenges that I face as an attorney is people getting their expectations from whatever the outcomes their friends or family members have received in the past. There will always be different factors, so don't go into it with too many expectations. I may have a client who comes to me and says, hey, my girlfriend Jill, you know, who has two kids and was married for about the same amount of time that I was married, got this result. And lastly, be sure to balance your mental health even if you initiated the divorce. You have to be mindful of where your head is, where your heart is, where your emotions are as you proceed, and especially if you have kids. It's important to take care of yourself, whatever that looks like for you. For some, that may be working out, therapy, a massage, or even just sleeping. The energies it's going to be drained by this divorce, even if you have an attorney handling it for you. It's stressful, so take care of yourself. We're helping you navigate through tough times. You know, winter means swapping swimsuits for sweaters and t-shirts for heavy coats, but guys, your hair also needs a variety of different products and routines to help keep it healthy. So Jackie Danker has tips on how to keep your hair hydrated through the cold winter months. There are so many things to love about the winter months, but also some parts we could do without, namely dry hair. I feel like my hair always breaks off and is there ways to hydrate it and make it healthier? Yes, absolutely. The benefits is that our hair is gonna be more manageable, less frizzy, it's gonna look silkier and much shinier. To show us how it's done, we turned to hairstylist for Sola Salon's Ashley Sells. We're starting off with the products we need. So when you're shopping for a conditioner, I usually recommend a mask. And look for keywords on the bottle like moisture, nourishment, conditioning. And when reading the ingredients, look for panthenol and even glycerin, which are both humectants, so they can help with the moisture. Also, we want some oils like jojoba, rose hip, things like that to also close down your hair cuticle. She says you can grab masks and oils at the pharmacy, but if you want to try one that is salon quality, she recommends Olaplex. It nourishes, it hydrates, but it also has bond builders in it. So that's going to strengthen your hair and keep it in good condition to begin with. Next up, how often do we hydrate? The mask you can use every time you shampoo. Which she doesn't recommend every day. I say a good rule of thumb is twice a week and sometimes three. So we can keep those natural oils in our hair. Oh my god, I'm doing it way too much and I do feel like maybe I'm taking the oils out of my hair. Yes, maybe so and then it could be overproducing. She says if we feel our hair is too oily, instead of shampooing, you can use a boar bristle brush that will pull some of that oiliness from your scalp so you don't feel like you look oily or dirty. Now it's time to apply and put the process to the test. We went with an Olaplex moisturizing mask. Take me to hydration town. Shampoo as usual. I just take probably two minutes or so. And she says stick to the scalp. Focus that on the scalp. We're cleansing the scalp, we're conditioning the ends. I'm, I've done it all wrong all these years, <laughs> actually. I recommend wringing as much of the water as possible out of your hair so that you're not diluting the mask. Keep the mask that you're applying to your hair off of your scalp because your scalp produces natural oils that are tremendous for the health of your hair. Read the instructions, but generally three to five minutes is enough time for it to do its thing. Wait a few and then wash out. I'm still napping over here. And when drying your hair, instead of those bulky towels, she says use a microfiber towel. That's less friction. There's all these yep. like little things that we wouldn't necessarily yes. think about. And va va boom. Oh my gosh. It's so silky. Fighting the cold with healthy and hydrated hair. Still to come on the list. 
this is Patrick. He's the one that started all this stuff. The OG. How animals are helping humans at this zoo. It's so fun to watch the kids come up here. Plus, the family reunion that was decades in the making. We're just <laughs> ecstatic. It's been so long, and we love each other. We yeah. really do. And drum donuts, it is. Uh, hot oh. pancakes. Uh, pancakes oh, is oh, yeah. Why Pictionary makes for great TV. It's like a multi-generational game. All that and more ahead on the list. Friends, welcome back. You know, in this busy and sometimes difficult world, our animal friends can get left behind. But after he rescued a tiny donkey, one Arizona man took matters into his own hands. Yeah, as he nursed it back to health, other animals came along, and now it's become a safe haven for all kinds of critters. It's called Carl's Damaged Pet Warehouse. <laughs> and the animals aren't the only ones benefiting from this community petting zoo. What could be just a random collection of critters is now home to everything from donkeys to ducks. Carl's Damaged Pet Warehouse is what I call it. And they're, they're all gentle. Carl Anderson, owner and caregiver of Carl's Damaged Pet Warehouse, is on a mission to connect the community with loving animals, many that began injured or without homes that now live at his makeshift animal rehab center. This is Patrick. He's the one that started all this stuff. The OG. He's the one. He was born on St. Patrick's Day about 10 years ago, and his mama wouldn't have anything to do with him, and he almost died. I had about nine animals at that time. I'm up to 34, I think, now. The goats are pretty famous in these parts. I got cinnamon. I got Vincent Van Gogh. I got Snowball. The menagerie also includes two cows, a turkey, a pair of ducks, a giant tortoise or two, a couple of basset hounds, and a trio of labs. People just come up to me after that and, can you take my goats? Can you take my pigs? I can't keep them anymore. Some people didn't ask. They just threw them over the fence. <laughs> I come out here in the morning and I got me a new goat. Well, there's a new one, yeah. Each animal gets veterinary help from checkups to hoof jobs. They come out and work on the cows and the donkeys, and I got one it's an exotic bet. He was just out here looking at my turkeys and one of my pigs last week. Carol soon realized he had a mini zoo and he's thrilled to welcome the community. It's so fun to watch the kids come up here because when they first come up, they're scared to death, of, especially the cow. But after about the third or fourth time, they're taking carrots. I put carrots out for them. They're putting right in the mouth of the cows. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt, and they're all used to people. They're also used to a diet high in carrots. 350 pounds of carrots a week. Wow. And other goodies like apples and pumpkins. Oh, look at that. A great way to meet your neighbors, huh? It is. I think if I could get the voting age down to seven, I could run for mayor. <laughs> At the tail end of our story is the therapeutic benefits for us humans. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. One regular visitor uses her visits as a type of therapy. She comes here when she's mad and she says, I'll stay here for 15 or 20 minutes and I'll go home happy. Another mom said her little one asks to go every day. I was getting breakfast out for my boys. He got the carrots out and he said, animals, animals. He's just two, so he doesn't say a lot, but he knows animals and he knows Carl's. And Carl says that the animals and kids have rescued him after the passing of his wife, Rita. When she passed, I just, I fell into a hole and this has really helped me. So when people talk about the therapeutic value of animals, I know it works. Pets and people helping each other heal. We've all heard the expression absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, it turns out being reunited can make the heart grow warmer. Teresa Strasser is here with a few incredible reunions. Teresa. Thank you. These remarkable stories are a great example of how sometimes refusing to give up can really pay off. Coming in at number one, sisters Susan High and Lynn Yusevic. We're just ecstatic. <laughs> and we love each other, we yeah. really do. Susan and Lynn were adopted by different families when they were just little girls, but they always wondered about their biological family. I looked for my biological family for a really long time and I kept hitting dead ends. One day, Lynn decided to try Ancestry.com. Took the DNA test and I see this person. Then a few years later, I get an email saying we might be sisters and the rest is history. It took a while, but that is one very happy ending. 
at number two, Bruce Hoax and a special ring. Who's Bruce? Wait. Bruce. Bruce lost his class ring back in 1967. 54 years later, Jan Malik came across that same ring while cleaning out her mother's basement. So through that process, I'm like, we have to find the owner. So she went on Google. She found Bruce's Facebook alumni group. Jan got in contact with the page's chairman, Frank Russo, who helped her reunite Bruce and his ring. Does that Put look ring at it. That looks like it. Amazing. And last on our incredible reunions list, Max, Nori, and Mike Johnson. We even had a talk. We said we might have to just accept that she's not going to come back to us. Max got lost while her family was camping at Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. She ran down into the caldera down into the trees, which was like super scary. Her owners reported Max missing on a Facebook page where a retired police officer offered to help them. I am free to do this kind of work and travel wherever I'm needed. Shannon Jay spent months looking for Max by placing cat food and thermal cameras throughout the entire national park until one day he was able to rescue Max from the middle of a snowstorm. He never gave up and so that I can't think enough. I just know words for how grateful we are. And now after four long months, Max is back with her family. And those were a few incredible reunions bringing you light in 2023. We hope lots more to come on the list. Stay right here. Welcome back. Now, if you ask someone what games they grew up playing with their families, a whole lot of them, without hesitation, will say Pictionary. Eddie D. Jamal is cluing us in to why folks have been loving this game for almost 40 years. Pictionary is the popular game of quick sketches and hilarious guesses that's brought families together for decades. Just last September, we saw the premiere of a new game show based on it. What's up? hosted by Jerry O'Connell. We caught up with him after a busy day of hosting duties to help us dive into what makes this popular game a classic. Starting with, it's a timeless crowd pleaser. Cowboy! I have twin girls, and it's something they can play, something my wife and I can play, and something our parents can play. It's like a multi-generational game. It doesn't involve like words or like math or like thinking. It's the game's simple premise that helped make it a hit since it was first introduced in the 80s. A game where it's not about artistic skills, but guessing abilities. Jerry uses actor Colton Dunn as an example. It's a circle, a drum, donuts, CDs. Uh, hot oh. pancakes. Uh... Pancakes is oh, oh, yeah. yeah! He is so fun on Pictionary. He really is able to guess what people are drawing. It is crazy. And again, not the best artist, but he gets the job done. Finally, Pictionary's success has led to several modern versions of the game, including Pictionary Air, the Pictionary app, and the Pictionary Man. Cold! Oh, catch a cold? Yes! <laughs> Not to mention three different game shows, one in the 80s, another in the 90s, hosted by Alan Thicke, and now a third currently airing on Fox TV stations. We are about to begin a new era of hand-drawn brilliance. But not with this one. People could play at home. We let people see drawings unfold at home and they could try and guess what it is. It's just sort of like a modern take on it. But from a hosting standpoint, I try to go a little old school, try to make sure I have a voice that I go into. Welcome to Pictionary. We've got a sketchy situation here. My favorite game show hosts are the ones who you get the same thing sort of every day. You know, that's what you look for is like a familiarity. It's like Bill Collins, a concert. Uh, we're here. Uh... Five days a week, just come on by. And that's our celebration of the enduring legacy of Pictionary. We got a tie game, everybody! We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list. And KG, Lake Superior State University in my home state of Michigan has released its annual list of banned words for the upcoming year. Yes, these are words that have become so overused that they've essentially lost their meaning or have crossed over into annoying. Mm -hmm. And I wholeheartedly agree with their pick at number one. All right, GOAT, as in greatest of all time. Yeah, this seemed to break into greater circulation when Tom Brady won his seventh Super Bowl ring. But now people just use it for anybody doing anything that was okay. Like, hey, wait to finish your oatmeal, Bobby. You're the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, and if you think about it, GOATs eat garbage. <laughs> 
right? How <laughs> aspirational can that really be? Um, there are some other doozies here too. Quiet quitting, which is just a very trendy way of saying just doing your job. <laughs> KG, the list is amazing, but irregardless of their gaslighting, I will absolutely be using some of these banned words moving forward because it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just used the rest of the words on their list in a single sentence. I did my homework. I Apparently you did. That is amazing. <laughs> okay, is cringe on that list? I don't like cringe. Hmm. How about you? Anything that you don't like? I have an issue with healthy because most times it doesn't really mean what people think. It should be healthful. And since no one knows the difference, we're just going to take the word away. No more healthy. No more healthy? Okay, I'm bringing back cringe from retirement because that <laughs> was cringe. And friends, that is what's last on our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow on the list, dirty jobs that are full of clean cash. Nobody on dirty jobs looks prosperous. No one looks successful, but it's shocking how many are. Plus, why go-kart racing isn't just about speed. Tap the brakes just before you get into the turn. And <gasps> discover the true story behind the upcoming movie about the cocaine bear. Tomorrow on The List.